ever heard the name Lawrence Hargrave? Born in 1850, he was a shy and softly spoken boy with a sharp mind. Destined to become a lawyer, Lawrence missed his exams. Why? Because he was off exploring the world. When he returned, he decided to become an engineer and his passion for inventing began. His first invention was tested right here at Rushcutters Bay. A pair of boat-shaped shoes that floated, allowing him to walk on water. There are lots of ideas in my head. Wow, that must come out of my fingertips eventually. And he used to live here. Lawrence had a natural ability with mechanical things and a fascination with observing the natural world. His next job was here at the Sydney Observatory. As an astronomical observer, he witnessed the transit of Mercury in 1881 and made observations on the eruption of the volcano Krakatoa. Luckily for Lawrence, his father made sure that he didn't have to worry about money. This meant he could quit his job and become a full-time gentleman inventor. His next passion, and one that would last the rest of his life, was for flying. Except in the 1890s, no one had flown before. Lawrence's inspiration for inventing the first flying machine came from his observations of nature, the flapping of birds' wings. Despite trying for many years to invent a flying machine with flapping wings, Lawrence never succeeded. But he didn't give up. Instead, he started to think about the shape of wings and how birds could fly and soar on the breeze. This led to his next invention and his most successful, the box kite. A three-dimensional geometric kite made of red cedar and calico. Cellular kites, he called them, cells through which the wind would blow, producing lift and stability. to Stanwell Park, south of Sydney, Lawrence spent more and more time observing nature and developing his kite designs. This place had the perfect ingredient, wind. Lawrence believed that if he attached four of his kites together, he could lift a person off the ground. After years of testing, tweaking and thinking, Lawrence was finally ready to see if his dream of flying would become a reality. On a windy morning on the 12th of November, 1894, he and a few friends came to the beach here at Stanwell Park, brought four of his box kites and tied them together. They attached them to the ground using piano wire and hooked on a seat. Lawrence hopped on and waited for a gust of wind. Soon, one after the other, the kites lifted into the air and then Lawrence was airborne, dangling five metres above the sand. He had become the first Australian to be airborne. Little did Lawrence know that in 1910, only 16 years after his pioneering flight here on the beach, the famous magician Harry Houdini would make the first recognised flight in a plane in Australia. Harry's biplane was heavily influenced by Lawrence's box kite designs. Actually, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that early plane designers were highly influenced by Lawrence's box kite designs, making him a really important figure in the early design of planes. But because of Lawrence's friendly nature and his willingness to share his designs, plus the fact he didn't patent his designs, meant that he was never given the true credit he deserved for his part in the evolution of human flight. When the Wright brothers from America made the first powered flight in 1903, Lawrence wrote a letter to congratulate them. I'm sure he was disappointed that he hadn't been the one to invent the first aeroplane, but I'm sure he was thrilled that human flight had become a reality. We're here at the Lawrence Hargrave Memorial, this beautiful sculpture by Bert Flugelman. 
While no single person was responsible for the invention of the aeroplane, Lawrence Hargrave played a huge part in the development of flight. For Lawrence, the only way to solve problems was to work together, help each other and find ways to improve designs. He always persevered despite his failures and he never gave up. So the next time you're up in an aeroplane or even flying a kite on a windy day, spare a thought for Lawrence and his amazing mind for helping us all get airborne.